Hello everyone, today we'll be talking about plate tectonics. In this video, I will go over some basic concepts that you need to know before you can complete this week's lab exercises. Okay, let's start off with this. Our planets are made up of layers, and there are two ways in viewing or classifying these layers. We can either divide the layers based on their chemical composition or based on their physical properties or rheology. Chemically, we divide our planet into crust, mantle, and core, whereas physically or rheologically, we divide the Earth into the lithosphere, asthenosphere, mesosphere, outer core, and inner core. The crust and lithosphere are further divided into continental and oceanic depending on the types of rocks and composition that made up those layers. Continental crust consists of rocks that have granitic compositions, whereas oceanic crust consists of rocks that have basaltic compositions. We will talk more about this in a second, but I just want to point out that when we are talking about tectonic plates, we refer to the broken pieces of the lithosphere. Another thing I would like to emphasize here is, as you can see in the simplified figure that I made, there are some overlaps within these layers. For example, the lithosphere layer overlaps with the crust and the upper part of the mantle. That's the layering of our planet. Now let's dive in into the main topic of this week's lab, the theory of plate tectonics. The theory of plate tectonics states that the Earth's outermost physical layers are broken into pieces or plates, and these plates are able to move and interact with one another. The, these interactions are very important because they are responsible for various processes that are taking place in our planet, such as the formation of mountain chains, most volcanic activities, and earthquakes. In addition, this theory also provides frameworks to understand many other processes in our planet, including long-term climate changes and biologic evolution. That's why this theory is thought to be the unifying theory of, of Earth sciences. Next, if we look into the historical aspect of this theory, the theory of plate tectonic was preceded by the continental drift hypothesis. The hypothesis was first proposed by a German scientist named Alfred Wegener in 1912. He hypothesized that at one point in the past, all continents on Earth were connected and formed a supercontinent which is called Pangaea, and then broken down and got separated to form the present day configuration of continents. This hypothesis of the ability of continents to move is very foundational in the later development of the theory of plate tectonics. In his paper and book, Wegener provided evidence that support in, in his hypothesis, including the jigsaw puzzle fit of continents that you can see in this reconstruction here. The next evidence that he presented, he presented was the distribution of terrestrial fossil and tropical a biota across different continents, which indicates that at some point in time, those widely separated continents were connected as a supercontinent Pangaea. Wegener also argued that distribution of geologic features that has same ages, such as mountain ranges, also serve as an evidence of, of his hypothesis. However, this hypothesis was not very well received by the scientific community at that time. The main reason was Alfred Wegener was unable to provide a compelling mechanism behind the proposed movement of continents. 50 years later, a scientist named Henry Hess proposed the seafloor spreading hypothesis, which provides the mechanism behind the drift of continents. Hess hypothesized that oceanic crust is created along mid-oceanic ridges above regions of upwelling magma from the mantle. This process push the seafloor or oceanic crust away from one another, and this is the mechanism behind the movement of continents. The seafloor spreading hypothesis was supported by the discovery of mid-oceanic ridges through seafloor mapping projects by Mary Tarp and Bruce Heason, and the seafloor magnetic anomaly by Fine, Matthew, and Morley. Today, the theory of plate tectonic is one of the most well-tested and well-received theory in earth science. The evolution from a hypothesis to a theory took more than 50 years and through various testing and verification. Here is a global map of plate tectonics con configuration of our planet. 
In the next few slides, we will discuss different types of plate boundaries shown in this map. There are three types of plate tectonic boundaries, diverging, convergent, and transform. Divergent boundaries are plate boundaries where the plates are moved away from one another. These boundaries are characterized by non-explosive lava flows and relatively small earthquakes. These processes also cause ocean basins to grow wider and move continents apart. An example of a divergent boundary is the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. The next type of boundary is convergent boundary. A convergent boundary is where plates are moving toward one another. We further divide convergent boundaries into three subgroups based on the types of lithosphere or plates interacting at those boundaries. The first subtype is continent-continent boundaries. These boundaries are characterized by high mountain ranges and big earthquakes. The most famous example of a continent-continent convergent boundary is the Himalayas, shown here. The next subtype is ocean-continent convergent boundaries. These boundaries are characterized by sub subduction. Subduction is a process where the oceanic plates dive underneath or subducted under the other plate. In this figure, here is the subducted plate. The oceanic plates can get subducted underneath other plate because oceanic lithosphere are tend to be denser than other plates, especially the continental lithosphere. In addition to subductions, these boundaries are also characterized by volcanoes and big earthquakes. Here is an example of an ocean continent boundaries. The next type of convergent boundary is ocean ocean convergent boundaries. These boundaries are characterized by subductions, volcanoes, and major earthquakes. An example of ocean ocean convergent boundary is the Mariana Trench. The last type of plate boundaries is transform boundaries. A transform boundary is where the plates are moving past one another. These boundaries are characterized by the absence of volcanoes, pit earthquakes, and lateral offset of geographic features due to the lateral or horizontal movement of the plates. The most famous example of a transform boundary is the San Andreas Fault. In one of the exercises, you will need to use geographic coordinates to calculate the rate of tectonic movement of certain location. So here, I just want to discuss shortly about geographic coordinate system. Geographic coordinate is a method to express location precisely on the surface of the Earth. There are two elements in geographic coordinates, latitudes and longitudes. Latitude is a way to express location relative to the equator whereas longitude is how we express location relative to the prime meridian. There are two ways in showing geographic coordinate. We can either use the degree, minute, and second format, or we can either use the decimal formats. Here is an example of the geographic coordinate of the Thompson Library. The first set of numbers is the latitude, and the second set of numbers is the longitude. When you use the decimal format, you use negative and positive signs depending on the hemisphere of the location. Positive latitude means northern hemisphere, negative means southern hemisphere, whereas positive longitudes mean eastern hemisphere, and negative means western, like the Thompson here. And lastly, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact one of your TAs by sending emails or come to the scheduled office hours. Thank you and bye.